Hey everyone, my name is Brett Manning and I lead tokenomics here at the Giant Protocol. Today I'm going to talk to you about how we design a token-based economy to support the growth of the protocol, making sure we align incentives for all the parties, that is, the telecommunications companies, the carriers who provide data, the consumers who buy data, and the community at large who, who stake to secure the protocol. And to help me explain these concepts, I'm going to use a tool that we built. So what you can see behind me is our economy simulator. You can play with this yourself. I'm going to put a link in the notes to the, the video. Um, and you can change some of the assumptions and see what happens to the protocol. Uh, we'd appreciate any feedback that you have. It is a Monte Carlo simulator. But it's to say that it, it has some randomness to ensure that we can see what kind of uncertainty we have in the, the model. Um, and it's kind of like an agent-based model. Um, although at a slightly higher level because of the computational overhead. So to start with a bit, a bit of an overview, the Giant Protocol uh, is a market where you can sell and buy bandwidth. Um, that is to say, we create a token, a DCT, a digital a data contract token, uh, which is a, a digital asset, which is a claim against the provision of some data in the future. That could be by eSIM or Wi-Fi, um, but it's a, a way of tokenizing that bandwidth. The protocol also guarantees delivery of that bandwidth, that, that data. The way it does that is either by holding uh, any funds that you use to pay for it in escrow, or if the staking pool is large enough, then uh, the staking pool itself will back that data. What that means is that consumers can have confidence that they'll receive the service they've been promised or, or get their money back. Um, that gives us three key groups of people that we need to worry about. The providers, uh, those carriers or, or telecommunications firms who are giving us the data, the consumers who are buying the data, and the stakers who are securing the protocol. And so I'm going to talk about incentives for those three groups. Uh, I'm going to talk about two different types of incentives. The first are token-based incentives. These are medium-term growth-based rewards that ensure providers and stakers are all part of this owner economy. Um, what that means uh, is that we have a fixed supply of tokens that we're going to uh, use as rewards for people who buy and sell data, um, which are fixed for 50 million, 50 million giants for suppliers, 50 million giant for uh, people who demand data. Um, and I'm going to talk about how we uh, figure out the, the scheme to, to give that away. Um, beyond that, we also have some economic incentives. So that is the key design, the, the, the business model of the protocol. Um, which in steady state should ensure that the economy is self-sustaining, that the token will have a fixed overall supply um, and will rely on the utility for its growth, um, which means that we have a long-term proposition, not just a, a short-term flash in the pan thing. Um, so I can start with a, a quick overview of my simulator. Um, when you first load it, uh, you'll come to this economy page, which has some kind of headline metrics uh, for what the, the economy looks like at the end of the simulation. So each of these uh, little boxes is the, a value on the last day of the simulation, um, as well as some charts uh, that show you how things progress through time. Um, the, the major driver of our economy is uh, how much data is bought and sold on the platform. That is the key assumption. Um, so in this example, uh, if I go to the parameter screen, uh, and maybe shrink my head a little bit, uh, you, you'll see a, a lot of different parameters. And the, the, the total sales is this table down here. So you can change what years we target uh, and this ARR. ARR is annual run rate. Um, so that is the, the, the uh, sales times by 365 or the daily sales times 365. Uh, in this example, uh, we have $200 million worth of sales um, per year by the end of the second year. Uh, if we go back to the economy tab, uh, you'll see that gives us daily sales of about $770,000. Um, if I were to say, uh, change this and make this uh, 300 rather than 200, I change it in the table, press enter, uh, and then I save my parameters. If I go up to my economy tab and click run simulator, uh, what you'll see is that the, the little space bar will update. Uh, you'll see the charts may flash. Uh, as the data updates in the back end, um, and then the numbers will also change. And so what it's doing is it's running that much color simulation in the background, uh, simulating the, uh, the the sales of DCTs, uh, and, and working out what kind of funnel of doubt, what uncertainty there is around some of these numbers. 
Um, so we can until it gets to 770. Ooh, make sure it doesn't go too far. Uh, and what you can see is uh, rather than 770,000 daily cells, it would now be 1.12 million if that was the run rate at the uh, the, the two-year point. Uh, and the, the way to think about this is a what-if uh, engine. It's giving you a what-if this happened kind of result. So uh, that is the simulator. I'm going to come back to the economy screen a little bit later to talk about staking. Um, but for now, I'm going to move on to the providers. So as I said, the providers are carriers who are uh, selling data on the protocol. Um, and they, they publish offers on the chain. They sell the DCTs. And I'm going to talk more about the exact mechanics of DCTs in a future video. But for now, think of that as the, the tokenized data asset. Um, and to incentivize those providers to join the protocol in the first place, we have these supplier rewards. So that is for every giant's worth of data sold, uh, you will receive 0 0.3 giant back as a supplier reward. So what that means is that as a provider, say I have, uh, in this case, $119 million worth of sales, I know some of those will be refunds. So some of those will need to go back to consumers. So that is consumers who are unable to access the data for whatever reason. Uh, it could be that they were in a, a signal black spot uh, or their phone wasn't quite compatible or, or, or they had another problem uh, that meant that they couldn't use the data. Uh, so a little bit of that gets refunded. In this case, about $2 million worth. Then the protocol will take a fee to meet the running costs of the protocol uh, as any marketplace charges a transaction fee. That's another $2 million. Uh, and then the pool yield. So this is the, the fee that gets paid to the stakers uh, who are uh, guaranteeing the service delivery. Uh, it's another two million. Uh, and so that means that you get it with revenue of 112 million on sales of 120, um, which is not bad. But then we give back some supplier rewards uh, in, in Giant, uh, in this case, $21 million. And so that takes us to a point where the income for the provider is actually higher than the sales, but when the revenue. <laughs> Uh, which is going to be a good thing. Um, so how we figured out uh, the rate at which we give them, as I said, for the initially, uh, providers will receive 0 0.3 giant per giant sold. Um, that's a 30% rebate effectively. Um, once we hit $2.5 million worth of sales, we will reduce that by a factor of 2.5. So 0 0.3 gets divided by 2.5. And then for every five-fold increase, so that is two and a half million for the first one, seven and a half for the second one, so on and so forth, um, uh, we will reduce it by a further factor of 2.5. Uh, all this is detailed in the white paper, um, but uh, on the parameters screen, we have the, the supply reward parameters and the demand reward parameters, the same structure where we have this threshold, 2.5 million, a multiplier, so every five-fold increase, we will reduce by a factor of the divisor, which in this case is 2.5 again. Um, so there are little eyes here that explain what these parameters are, uh, if you're having to play around with this. Um, if you do want to get to the white paper from the, the simulator, uh, you can click on the Learn More button, which has a brief overview of some of the things I'm talking about. Uh, and you can click the, the Read White Paper link for more information. Um, as I said, the consumer rewards are, have a very similar um, pattern. So they, they have a, an initial level, which is set to 0 0.4, because we, we need consumers to come on board really quickly. Um, and that reduces by a, a factor of 2.5 once it hits 2.5 million in sales, and then a, a further 2.5 factor of 2.5 for every five-fold increase. Um, again, those parameters are, are down here, the demand reward parameters. Um, so if we, what does that mean for a consumer? Well, uh, over here, I have some information about my actual DCTs. So the DCT, the average DCT price, I got at $20. Uh, it lasts on average for 30 days, around 2% of that may end up refunded. Um, and that gives us a, a size of DCT that's about five gigabytes. So in other words, uh, our raw data is uh, $4 per gigabyte of data. But over here, if I go to my consumer tab, you can see my net cost per gigabyte is actually 2.78. And that's because of the demand rewards. Um, but because you're, you're getting those giant tokens back as a reward, you're, and that gives you uh, owner economy investment in this economy, um, because you, you're, you're, you, once you have a giant tokens, you have a say in how the, the protocol is run. Um, one other thing I was going to mention uh, is 
these stakers. So uh, as I mentioned, the, the, the stakers have uh, a, a vested interest in securing the protocol, uh, and they, they have two roles here. The first role is that they are like the, the nominators for the validator nodes. Uh, can, if you compare this to the po Polkadot protocol, uh, stakers are nominators. But they have a secondary role as well, where they guarantee that if a refund is needed from a consumer, that then the consumer can get that refund. Um, so they get rewarded for for, a tip, for that service. Um, in, in the initial uh, state of the economy, they will benefit mostly from validator rewards or node rewards, uh, more accurately. And those node rewards are set under parameters again. Uh, so I have node rewards at year one, which we're starting out at 13%, and the node rewards at year 10, which goes down to 3%. Again, there's a fixed allocation of tokens. So once all of these rewards are used up, 350 million in this case, um, there will be no more. And in our white paper, we suggest that the, the DAO at that point has a few different ways they could approach this. They could increase token allocation, which we would discourage, uh, but they could also uh, forfeit some of their the protocol revenue to pay the validators. But also, stakers get income from the yield. As when we're on the provider page, one of the uh, one of these bars was pool yield, and so that gets distributed uh, to the to the stakers. Um, so if I go to my economy page, I have this key staking metrics, and so this purple line here is the the TGI, the total giant index. So that is, if I invest, if I held a single giant token uh, at time zero, how many giant tokens would I end up with at each point? That is accounting for those node rewards and for pool yield that uh, it is being passed through. Um, and here you can have that over two years, it would it would double the value, or you'd end up with double the number of giant tokens. Um, so that is the uh, the stakers. Now, I've gone through the the short term or the short to medium term really uh, rewards that that each of the um, the, the stakeholders get. Um, but on the provider side, uh, we also have this long term benefit, which is the staking pool, uh, which means that the providers get paid much faster than they would usually. So rather than having to wait that for the token to expire to receive their income, they receive it immediately. Now that's effectively pretty effective or, or, or very reasonably priced financing uh, for, for the provider. Um, but they also have access to all of the consumers who are on the platform, uh, which means that the bigger the platform is, the, the more attractive it is to providers. And so we, we use those medium term rewards to attract providers and attract consumers. And once we have them, the protocol itself becomes sustaining because it is sufficiently large that there's a network effect that, that means that providers would want to be part of the protocol anyway even without the rewards. From the consumer side, uh, they're, they're buying data on chain. Uh, they're buying it globally. They're not locked into a particular provider uh, using eSIM technology or Wi-Fi to, to guarantee that. Um, in, in the medium term, they're receiving the demand rewards. Uh, so the, the platform becomes larger. Um, and then in steady state, they benefit from a, a more transparent and competitive landscape from these providers. Uh, rather than being tied into a contract over the long term, uh, they can choose the best provider for where they are at that time, whatever country, whatever region that they're in. They, they choose the provider that has the, the, the service that has a, a good price or, or, or just a better service in the area. Um, and so that is a quick overview of the incentives for the giant protocol. A quick overview of the, the simulator. Um, I'd really like you to have a play around with this, see what you think, um, tell me any bugs you find. Uh, it will be updated periodically. But otherwise, I look forward to meeting you all in a, a future video. Uh, as I say, there are more to come. Thanks.